Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about this Renology 48 watt solar inverter charger that I picked up and kind of set up here in the garage. We are going to install this in the uh, deer stand tiny house we have up north and I think this is going to supply more than enough power that I need for up there. This can put out uh, 3,500 watts of power uh, which I think is more than enough and we'll hook it up to a Renology uh, battery that I got up here. It's a 48 volt 50 amp hour battery. This battery is probably a little bit undersized for that inverter, but we can always add more batteries to it if we need to. And this is pretty simple setup. I've been watching other YouTube channels like Will Perales. If you guys have saw him, I, he, he knows a lot. Like I've learned a lot from just watching his videos and he doesn't recommend these solar chargers and I can kind of see why he's, he's got a video out there of him, but I, I went with it because I think it'll work for us with what we're gonna do with it. One of the things he didn't like about it is it doesn't connect on the bottom of it here. So you can only connect on the top. So I put some screws up there. I kind of made a model here of what the interior of the uh, tiny house deer stand looks like. And so like, here's where the window is in that stand. So and that's the top of the stand up there. I think I can put it in the corner up there. If you guys go watch some of those other videos, you'll see what I'm kind of talking about. I think I'll put this in the, in the corner and then I bought myself some two uh, gauge wire, which can handle up to 125 uh, amps of power in it, right? And I got myself a DC 125 amp circuit breaker here that I have the battery cables going through. It's just to kind of give me some extra protection to make sure that I uh, don't uh, burn anything up. And then the next thing I went and did is I went and bought just a simple power strip from the, like the dollar store. It was a couple of bucks. I did uh, wire that into the power in here. One thing I don't like about this is there's no ground for this. The ground is on the outside of it here underneath, if you guys can see there. So I actually need to get a wire, a copper wire to go from there into this ground. I'll probably just wire nut it here, go to that ground. Um, and then this is the actual plug-in. I have another cord I just repurposed from some other things that I've got. I cut it off, wired it into here. It does have the ground, and I believe the way this works is once this ground is in here, you know, it goes to the ground in your house once you plug it in, and then that makes this whole thing grounded, so then you can connect to the ground nut here on the back. The other thing I plugged into it was a Bluetooth uh, option that comes with it. I'll show you that on my phone here in a second. But that was really all it was, all it was really required was to hook this cable up for power in. I've got this power for power out, and I eventually will take this off and actually wire this to a probably a small circuit breaker box and then use that to power the rest of the tiny blind i'll put you know outlets in that blind actually and this will run it all uh, last thing is to connect the two battery cables up here i ran it to the circuit breaker and then from the circuit breaker i'll run it down to the battery i'll hook it up here for you real, guy, real quick and i'll show you guys how it works I've already tested it out once. We'll have to plug it in. Obviously we won't have power out there when we get out there to plug in. It'll only be running off of solar. And that's the part that I don't have yet. I don't have any solar panels. So once I get solar panels, they will hook in to here. We'll get another breaker to go between that and the solar panels, hook that up. And I think we'll be good to go. But I just wanted to show you guys this system real quick. It didn't take really that long to set it up. The, the longest part was me learning how to put uh, these cable connectors on the end of this cable because I just bought regular cable. I cut it, had to put cable ends on it. So I had to learn how to do that. And then I also had to learn how to put these wires into the breaker here. I think I'm gonna buy a ferro kit to put over these wires. Right now the wires are just the bare wires going in there and they only go in about maybe a fourth of an inch. And so I, maybe a half an inch actually, and I just, they just don't seem really secure to me. So I'm gonna try and get a ferrule kit on here to put those together to hold it in there. So that's, that's some of the things that I've learned so far. And I've also been sure to make sure that this breaker is enough to handle the 125 amps that this cable can handle. So if it gets above 125 amps, this will get too warm and flip. So I don't end up melting a cable or something. I don't think you're ever gonna get up. I mean, this has only got 50 amps of power in it. So you're never gonna get 125 out of it. But if I add more batteries, then you could. So that's, that's how it's set up so far. 
Kind of the things I've, I've kind of learned, like I said, was it was difficult getting these on here. Definitely suggest getting the right tools for the job. I got a crimper here that I got online. I got a wire stripper for that big wire, which is that red thing there. Some heat sheet wrapping. Those are the ends that I've been using to put on the cables. This is the cable cutter for that big cable. And then this is just some wire strippers for those smaller cables for the power strip and the plug-in. But I'm going to go ahead and hook it back up to the battery here, plug it in, and I will show you guys how it's working. So I'm going to go ahead and hook the battery back up to it. This is a uh, 13 millimeter bolts. They say to use gloves with this stuff, which I've got here. When you hook this, especially when we hook this last uh, positive one up to it, we're going to hook our negative up to it here first. And we are, you know, this is 148 volts at 50 amps, so this battery holds. 2,400 watts of power in it, right? You definitely want to make sure that you don't uh, cross the two terminals. Don't want to short it out. Be a pretty big spark. And like I said, we're working with 48 volts here. This isn't like a 12 volt battery in a car. So a little bit more power. You want to be careful and don't electrocute yourself. This will be the positive. So at this point, we've got power going up to that breaker up above. You want to make sure your connections are nice and tight so you don't get heat build up on them. Something else I've learned about reading about it. My breaker is currently off. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. That's going to send battery power to the unit. So we can check these real quick with a multimeter. So this is the meter. I've got 50 volts at the bottom. I've got 50 volts at the top and I should have 50 volts up here on the inverter. There's the 50 volts at the inverter. So that's all going. And then next thing we gotta do is uh, plug it in with the cord here that I hooked up to it. And then the power switch is underneath it here. It's off right now. We're going to go to the one bar side to turn it on. You can flip it to the other side. You can hook a remote to it so you can turn it on from a distance. You can see here it's starting up. It's got a nice little LCD display on it. I've kind of gone through it and configured it a little bit and changed how much power it will use to charge from the power coming into it here. I changed it. I think the default was it would use 40 amps, but I changed it to be 10 amps because this uh, power cable I have going in here is only a 16 gauge wire. And so they're only rated up to 10 amps. And if you want to go look that stuff up, you can go look this stuff up anywhere online about what size copper wire can handle, how much amps it can handle. And a 16 gauge wire, which is what these are, can only handle uh, up to 10 amps and so that's why I, I went through and configured this already to only allow it to handle 10 amps and so you can see it's running now here it's got the ac input on it here it's got the charge here going on it don't have any loads on it yet but we'll put a load on it here in a second and you can actually see the loads coming out of it too but that's it that's the whole setup it's all running going well the other thing I kind of like about this, which I'm sure it's the same with all of them that are out there, is this can be put into different modes. It's got a PV priority where it will only use solar power to do everything unless the solar power gets too low and then it'll switch to utility. There's a utility priority where it always uses utility stuff for things. Unless the utility gets bad, then it'll switch to the solar energy. Then there's a hybrid, which kind of is the same as the PV priority, I think. But the hybrid says it'll use both the systems to try and charge at the same time. Whereas PV priority means it'll always try and use solar as much as it can first before it goes to utility. This will use both at the same time. And then there's the only solar charging, which is how we will set it up once we get it out in the field in the, uh, the tiny house out there where we don't have any utility power. So we'll only have the power from the solar arrays that will hook up to it. I think the power strip is currently turned off. If I turn it on, you'll see we got power now at the power strip. 
Let's hook a heat gun up to it real quick and I will show you the heat gun drawing off of it and show you how the app looks too on the phone. All right, I plugged in a heat gun here to it now. You can see here in the app that we've got uh, no amps coming out of it right now, no load on it. I'm gonna turn this on. You'll see this changes here in a second. So now you can see we've got 11.2 amps coming out of it. It's charging it from the utility right now. Here's all the uh, battery setups I set up in here earlier. So I had to configure that battery on the machine up there. You guys can look at the manual to figure that out. And you can kind of see how it's got this little graph showing the utility is going to load right now. It's not even pulling it from the battery. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug it from the utility and this should switch over to using the battery next. We're going to unplug it here so it's going completely off the battery now. It's beeping at us here or that the AC power is not going into it anymore. Now you can see that the status says it's not charging it anymore in here in the uh, phone. You can see the, the lines went away. I'm going to kick the heat gun on again. Let this update. Now we're pulling 12.5 amps with the heat gun. You can see it's coming out of the battery to the load. And this is more than likely how things will look out there because we won't have any utility power to go into it. It'll be the solar panel to the battery to the inverter to the load. And so we're pulling 12.5 amps out of that 50 amp battery there. Pulling 12 amps an hour we're only going to last, you know, four or five hours using this heat gun at this point. But I've got some other things I'm going to hook up in the, uh, the tiny house up there. I definitely don't think we're going to be using the full power out of that battery down there. You can also hear that it's kind of spun up the fans a little bit on here to pull all that power out of it. You turn this off, you still hear it here. You can kind of hear the fans. They're not that loud and they're winding back down because the power's not coming out of it. But that's really all there was to do to hook it up. I definitely suggest investing some of the tools you need to hook it up. You know, read about the amount of power that wires can handle so you don't end up melting a wire. You definitely don't want to start a fire. Like I said, I still need to find a way to hook that ground. I think I'm going to just wire nut the ground underneath here. And when I get out there to the tiny house, I'm going to have to drive a grounding rod in the ground to, to ground this whole system since we won't have any utility power out there. But that's the Renology 48 volt solar inverter charger that I've got set up here. I think it'll work fine out there. Actually, I think it's going to be more than enough I need out there. I'm going to be hooking up power in the tiny house. I'm going to probably hook up a camera out there that'll run off of this to watch out there rather than using the trail camera since I'll have power out there now. And I'm probably going to maybe even end up running off some uh, pumps for sprinkler systems and so forth out there to work on that uh, food plot. But that's what I got. I want to thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like this video. Uh, tell me what you think about the inverter charger. Tell me if you've tried these or if you like them or if you don't like them or what you think about the setup here. I think this is going to work out really well. I want to thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.